the, the funny thing is it's going to sound frighteningly similar to what we tell people working on supercomputers. The, uh, the key job of a programmer should be to identify the parallelism in what they're trying to accomplish. Um, if you're doing multiple different things, task, then try to express it that way. Don't, don't express your program as doing uh, step one, two, three, four, if those things could all happen at the same time. Uh, applications can really um, fundamentally be better if they're, they're broken up. Uh, HTML5 does an excellent job of this. Um, uh, the way I like to think of it is, is if you've got a web page, um, it, may, it may look like a game, but it <clears throat> may be rendered as a web page. Um, there's no reason to render this part and then this part and then this part. If you've got independent things on the screen, um, express them independently. And that, and that allows, uh, as devices get more sophisticated, with more cores, um, it allows them to do them in parallel, and it really can change the dynamic of, of an application, a game, or, or whatever you're doing. If you've got part of an application looking at your face through the camera, so it can do face recognition, a different part updating a graph, a different part fetching data from the web, uh, instead of cycling through those and doing them step one, two, three, then one, two, three, uh, you can make an, an application much more responsive um, and actually, that's one thing we see with these handheld devices is uh, we're all very impatient. If you touch an, an app icon, you want that thing to start. If you swipe it, you want the application to respond. And I think it's a, uh, an incredibly good application of parallelism to, to uh, make sure that your applications are written that way so they stay responsive. Because a non-responsive app is definitely uh, noticed by users and rejected. Yeah. and. Uh, Actually, um, uh, everyone's focusing on the actual mobile device and the power on the mobile device, but basically all these devices are connected. Um, so I'll push it back to in the data center. Uh, you know, have to take advantage of you know. The, there's basically two sides to, to most apps. Um, you know, maybe uh, maybe a game on your on your device is a little bit more focused, and you need you need that uh, capability. But for a lot of the mobility apps and going to Facebook and, and all those, you have this huge data center uh, in, in the background, and you have to write apps for that. So, and yep. many of the techniques uh, we've talking about uh, for parallelism, uh, you, you leverage um, you leverage on both sides. Absolutely, and the app may be talking to that cloud, and you don't want the app to send a request and wait for it. You want the app to to be getting things. It's exactly. A, it's, a, yeah. it's a cloud level of parallelism as well that the app developer gets to to worry about, which is what's the app doing, but in parallel, what's it having the cloud do, and how do you keep that responsive and, and not uh, bottleneck on, on waiting? Exactly, and if, you know, again, you can certainly issue multiple requests, then you have to be able to uh, have the, the code uh, in, in a parallel way be flexible enough to uh, respond to those requests if they come in in a different order than you planned. Otherwise, you're gonna have to do heavy synchronization, which is the, the death of, of parallel right. uh, programming. I mean, a very simplistic example is any mail application for reading your mail um, is going to keep asking the server, is there any new mail? But it doesn't freeze on waiting. It, it's when it becomes aware there's new mail, it'll display it for you. Otherwise, it's sitting there interacting with you, letting you compose mail, delete mail, whatever. But in the background, hopefully it's checking the server to see if there's new mail. And, um, not every app works that way. I think we've all used some mail applications over the years that wait, and it's kind of annoying. If all you want to do is read a mail that came in yesterday, why do you have to wait in case there's mail that came in today? Um, but I think every application can think of that sort of response.